Hey guys, Gary Lucas here. So today we're going to talk about uh, statements and loops. So to begin, we're <clears throat> we need to discuss what conditionals are. So uh, these are the conditionals inside of Java, uh, or at least these are the most used. There's like one or two more, uh, like you could just use a, a single one of these or a single equal sign. Um, but they basically mean the same thing and do less or do more which makes them less useful <laughs> if that makes any sense it doesn't really matter these are the ones that are the most important so two and signs uh means and okay if you were to do one and sign it would do the exact same thing but it would still check both sides of the condition which is inefficient and never useful um, this is or. <clears throat> this is uh, exactly equals. So it, it exactly has this value. And this uh, you would use to say is not. So you could use this in conjunction with all of these other ones. Um, so let's talk about <clears throat> a couple loops now, and then we'll get into a couple statements. So for the for loop, this is the basic for loop. Um, you're going to declare a variable of some kind. Now, you can use a variable that you've already declared. Uh, and then you're going to create a condition of some sort. And then you're going to increment the variable that you declared earlier um, by 1. Plus plus just means add 1 to this variable. Or you could, you could do minus minus, which uh, subtracts 1. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do plus plus because that's the most conventional way. <clears throat> so in this case, we have a variable i, which we've declared as 0. And you're going to put a semicolon. And then we're going to say, as long as i is less than 10, uh, we're going to run this code. Okay. And then what it does is it adds 1 to i. <clears throat> okay. So what this is going to do is it's actually going to run through this program 10 times. All right. Um, or maybe 11 because of uh, 10, because it starts at 0. <clears throat> so what it's going to do is we're going to say, oh, do a thing. And then what it does is it's going to add 1 to i, and then it's going to go back and check everything. So we're going to start at 0, and it's going to run all of this code. Then it's going to add 1 because of this. Um, and then it's going to go back up here and check the conditional. So it's going to be like, is 1 less than 10? And of course, 1 is less than 10, so it's going to do the code again. And it's going to come back up, and it's going to add 1, and then it's going to check the conditional. So then it's going to be like, is 2 less than 10? It's just going to keep doing that until eventually this condition is met. So actually, this is going to run 10 times, because it's less than 10, not less than and equals to 10. Uh, if it was less than and equals to 10, it would run 9 times, or 11 times. If it was less than 10, it's going to run 10, because uh, starting at 0, so yeah, so that's what a for loop does. So it just basically loops a bunch of times until the condition is met. Now, you can use these in the condition. So we could say uh, if i is uh, exactly equal to 27. Oh, not 277, 27. And it would use this as the conditional instead. Uh, you can even do, I think, uh, and, um, and let's do i is... Uh, less than 100. Now, obviously, this is impractical because 27 is obviously less than 100. But this is just to show you uh, what these conditionals can be used for. Okay. So now this is using a for loop with the uh, variables initialized outside of it. So int a and int b, uh, and this is actually what's called a nested uh, for loop here that we've got. So we've got a for loop inside of a for loop. It's crazy. So uh, a equals 0, a is less than 10, a plus plus, so we know that uh, this will run 10 times. Um, and then coming down here to the second for loop, inside of it, we have b equals 0, b less than 10, b plus plus. So we know that the second for loop will also run 10 times. But here's what's cool. Um, because this for loop is inside of this for loop, What's going to happen is if we can put like any code wherever, 
Um, but what it's going to do is going to run, it's going to check any information here. There isn't going to be any. So it's going to immediately start running this for loop. Okay. So I'm going to actually just uh, do thing. Um, and it'll iterate that information once. And then it'll go into the second loop. And then it'll do the entire second loop. So it'll run whatever code we have. And then it'll run this loop 10 times. Okay. And then it'll go back and check up here and increment this by one, OK? So effectively, this loop gets run uh, like 100 times, right? Because this loop, well, this loop gets run 10 times. But because this loop is running 10 times, um, it effectively runs like 100 times, right? So crazy stuff happens. So for every one time that this loop runs, this loop will run 10 times because it's inside of it. A lot of crazy stuff. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. We're actually going to be using this uh, in the first game we're going to be making. So it'll make more sense once you actually see what it does. Uh, then we have a while loop. So this is, uh, you just write while with parentheses and curly braces. Uh, and inside of the parentheses, you're going to put your condition. So in this case, I'm going to say a is less than 10. And by the way, I'm using this int up here. So a is less than 10. And then it will do a thing. But if you don't write uh, some kind of way to increment or some kind of way to to keep checking, um, it's, not, it's just going to run infinitely, right? If you don't add a way to have a increase or a change, then it's, it'll literally run forever. Um, so you, in this case, because I'm using an int as the conditional, now you, once it, you can use booleans. So you could say, as long as a is true, right? do this thing. And then maybe you have a method here that's checking stuff. And then eventually, bam, a is not true, and the while loop stops. Um, and once again, it'll do whatever code you write in here. And then we have what's called a do while loop. Now, this is uh, a, almost exactly the same thing as a while loop, except instead of running the code uh, after checking the conditional, um, it'll run the code before and then check the conditional. This is less useful uh, unless you specifically want the code to run at least once before checking the conditional. And now we're going to get into statements. So this is what's called an if statement. So all this does is it doesn't run like many times. It just runs once. Um, and it's just going to check your conditional. And if that conditional is true, or you could say uh, if A is not uh, less, sorry, I think you put like this, ah, whatever. Um, if A is not less than 10, uh, then it would run in here. But I think how you do that is you put more parentheses. Um, but yeah, so then it would run all the code in here. Uh, and it's pretty simple. It's just a statement. So if whatever, uh, do this. And you can get this like really confused, like absurd. You could do and uh, uh, a is uh, less than 100. Uh, and then you can actually add like parentheses and do like multiple groups of conditionals, um, but we don't we don't want like an insane one right now. And then you can also do what's called an if then else, uh, or you can also call it an if else statement. Um, so you would have your if statement and it would run a thing. Okay, it would check a conditional and then do some code, and then at the end you just write an else statement. Uh, which is just else followed by curly braces. And then, so if this conditional is not met, it'll instead run this code. So if A is greater than 10, it'll do whatever else is. Um, and you can actually chain if else ifs, okay? <laughs> so you could do if A is less than 10, do this. Else if, so you create a second conditional to check. So if a is not less than 10, uh, check this conditional. And you can keep doing that. You could do another else uh, if uh, a is uh, equal to 
for greater than uh, 100. Oh. Okay. Or I think it's greater than or equal to. Sorry. Greater than or equal to 100. Uh, do thing. And you do else if. you know, And you just keep chaining it. But that's inefficient. If you're going to have like a bunch of things and you're not checking ranges of values, um, a better way to do it is a switch statement. So a switch statement is pretty simple to do. Uh, in this case, I'm using a string, and I'm going to call it AA. Um, and what you do is you just write switch followed by parentheses and curly braces. And then inside of switch, you're going to create a variable or a magic uh, thing. Uh, and in this case, I'm just using a again. Um, and then you need to create a variable, in this case, string aa. And what it's going to do is, uh, so it'll check what a is. So if a happens to be 1, so it'll check whatever your variable is. This is where you would have your conditional, um, kind of. Uh, but you're just checking a variable. Okay, and then these cases are the conditionals. So if a is equal to 1, and I could obviously set this to 10, or I could set it to 1,000, you know, it'll just check the variable. So if the case happens to be this of our variable, then do this code. Okay? So this could be anything. This could be a bunch of if statements and for loops and whatever. It could be a method. Um, but in this case, I'm just saying, oh, set a equals to a equals 1, because that's what a happens to equal. And then you write break. So if this is the case, instead of constantly going through all the other stuff, it'll just go out of the statement. It's done. Uh, case 2. So if a equals 2, then it's going to do this, and then break out. And you could go forever. You could just have as many cases as you want. Uh, and you also need to have a default. So if it, for some reason, doesn't meet any of the cases that you've presented, uh, it'll just do this and then break out. Okay? And finally, uh, we have a thing called a ternary operator. So ternary operators are neat um, in that you can assign values to variables based on a condition. <laughs> so... So we have two variables here. We have value 1 and value 2. Uh, value 1 is equal to 1, and value 2 is equal to 2. And then we have another variable, which we want to use a ternary operator. So we want to create a condition. So based on our condition, the value of bigger value is going to be different. So in this case, we want to know which one of these is the bigger value. So our condition is value 1 is greater than value 2. So it's going to check, is value 1 greater than value 2? And if that's the case, okay, then bigger value, and we put this question mark here because that's a ternary operator. Um, so if that's the case, it's going to assign uh, value 1 to bigger value. If it's not the case, it's going to assign value 2 to bigger value. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of a weird little operation. Um, we might see it later. But yeah, so uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to check out my blog or Twitter. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And hopefully you have a great day.